Hi, everybody. Uh, good morning. My name is Yusuf Ufala uh, from English Language and Literature Year Institute at the Royal Commission in Jubail in Saudi Arabia. So I'm happy to present today my topic in uh, the Jal Call 2021 conference and uh, uh, take the opportunity to thank our colleagues in, uh, uh, in Jal Call who are uh, behind this uh, great event. So let me jump in and uh, start talking about the effective online measurements of student learning outcomes during the COVID-19 pandemic. So this is, uh, this is a topic where we're going to uh, talk about the uh, main aspects of the online measurement. And we'll try to explain to show to show you what is this or what we mean by what we mean by the online measurement and what is this new approach. So to start with, I'd like to just to show you the outline of my presentation, which consists of the following parts. I'll start with the background and the context of the topic. Then the second points I will discuss the assessment before COVID-19. How was it? I mean here I mean the traditional uh, way, then the online measurements of learning outcomes. Then I'll talk about the next approach, the alternative to the, let's say, to the old method. Then I will discuss the challenges to this next approach, and I will end up with uh, some conclusions. Okay, so that starts with the, uh, the background. Of course, before I talk about the online measurements, let's 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 discuss a little bit what we mean by learning outcomes. Learning outcomes and the outcomes they are connected and they are directly linked to the outcome-based teaching or the out, the outcome-based approach in teaching and learning. So, from the main, the outcome-based approach is or it consists or is based on the results. So what counts is the results, results of learning, the objectives, uh, and the, the, the outcomes. So this is, this is very important. We are going here, our main focus is on the objectives and the results of learning and teaching. So I'll start here by giving you an example from my presentation itself. As you can see, the outcome-based approach is based as on, the, on the outcomes or the results. Here in this presentation, by the end of this presentation, you'll be able to. So, what is the outcome of this presentation? You will be able to identify the key elements in the outline, the sequence of learning outcomes, appraise the success of the uh, student learning outcomes measurements methodology, and prepare a comprehensive assessment plan. So, for our presentation today, there are three learning outcomes. These are the results, the learning results of our presentation. What you will be able to do, uh, what you can do at the end of this presentation. So these are the, with some example, let's call them the fruit of our work. So I here, I by purpose, uh, put in bold the first words of each learning outcome. So you can see identify, praise, and uh, prepare. So I'm going to talk about these words here. Well, before we talk about these words, so the outcome-based approach has three steps. It's a process of three steps. Step one, write a measurable learning outcomes. Measurable learning outcomes. So what do we mean by measurable? Measurable learning outcomes how and uh, how do we write them? Something that we can measure, something that uh, we can assess to some extent. So we can see whether uh, this outcome has been achieved or not. So this is what we mean by measurable. And in order to measure specific learning outcomes, uh, specific learning outcomes, we have or we need to have uh, action verbs. So back to my to my previous slide, the uh, the verbs that I put in bold 
these are action verbs okay so if there is no action ver verb in the learning outcome statements which can be measure measured that means this learning outcome is not well written now the action verbs so let me paste them again so we have identify appraise and prepare so these action verbs they allow us to measure the achievements or to what extent the learning outcomes have been achieved these verbs okay they are measurable and they reflect also the different uh, levels of understanding the, uh, what we call the cognitive domain of uh, Bloom's taxonomy so here if we look at back to the verbs the action verbs we have identify raise and prepare so which the cognitive domains they represent so the word the verb identify it represents the knowledge okay which is uh, the basis of the cognitive domain so we have knowledge then we have the second verb which is a higher uh, level of cognitive in the cognitive domain it's a phrase where it needs a high order of thinking or you need to analyze then we have prepare and prepare is put things Put things together and here it is a synthesizer so we have three different levels in the cognitive domain now the second step in the in the measurements of learning outcomes is a, what teaching methods in learning activities that we use to help learners achieve uh, the learning outcomes so here we need to see the teaching methods because we are done with the uh, identification of the action verbs now the second step is what teaching methods and learning activities as a teacher i'm going to use or to adapt in order to help my learners to achieve the learning outcomes here we have a variety of teaching methodologies such as from independent learning activities uh, work-based learning we have no taking uh, critical thinking etc so there is a variety of teaching activities to the learning activities that can be used here and it depends on the teacher himself so you should see exactly what teaching activity can go with a specific learning outcome now the third step is the measurement of learners' achievements. Here is the our focus. How can we measure the assessments? How can we measure uh, the achievements of learning outcomes? So assessments before COVID nineteen. So what we call the traditional method. Usually we measure the achievements of learning outcomes by analyzing grades, using grades grades that they accumulate from different exams either whether it's summative or uh, summative or formative so in the summative exams such as tests assignments projects capstone projects final exams etc etc so we collect the data and we analyze it however we have two questions here number one are learning outcomes efficiently assessed? This is the first question. Now, in the assessment process of the learning outcomes, what do we, I mean, what we used to do? Here, I give you an example. As you can see in this pie chart, we have a pass fail uh, rate of a specific cause. Let's say here, as we can see, we have 86% pass and 13.2% of the fail. Then, if we go further, we can show this, uh, this final grade distribution. As you can see, we have a percentage of A's, B's, C's, D's, and F's. However, here, we can add also this, this graph here. 
uh, the graded frequency. And usually you can add as many graphs as we can to analyze the student's uh, results. However, are we assessing the uh, actual learning outcomes? This is the question, because here we analyze the overall results. However, the question is, are we assessing the learning outcomes? How do we know that the learning outcomes of these particular uh, class or this particular course have been achieved? So the analysis that I, I show you previously in the previous slide, it doesn't show exactly where the learning outcomes have been achieved or not. It gives you an, a general indication about how many students they fail, how many students they pass, how many students they got A, how many students B, and so on and so forth. But the question is, uh, the learning outcomes that I, 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 I identified and determined at the beginning of the course, and usually the learning outcomes, we write them the course specification. Mm -hmm. Five, six learning outcomes. Now, this is the question. Uh, are the learning outcomes or have the learning outcomes been achieved or not? So this this is not, I mean, if you analyze the results the way I showed you previously, it, it doesn't show. It doesn't show that the learning outcomes have been achieved or not. Now, the second question, are tests enough? So I believe that tests are not enough to assess students' achievements for the following reasons. Well, these are some reasons, of course. But there are others, there are many reasons. But I think the, the test is not enough. First, because when we give tests, usually we intend to measure what students memorize, how much uh, students memorized. And we, we don't intend, when we, we, the test is not meant, you know, to assess what a student can do. And this is, this is one of the big mistakes when it comes to assessment. Now, in an outcome-based approach, we need to assess what a student can do, because this is the outcome. We don't want to assess how much students observe, absorb the knowledge, okay? This is memorization. We are not testing memorization. We are testing skills. And this is very important. Now, the second point, some learners that are slower, slow learners than others. Sometimes when you set a test for, let's say, one hour or one hour 30, this is not enough. This is not sufficient for slow learners because they need more time to understand the question you need more time to decipher the meaning of what the question really wants from them. And then the third point is some students, only they are very clever, they might fail in a specific test. That's because they don't know, they didn't know the answer. That's because they have this test anxiety. So there is a phobia testing when the test comes they lose everything, okay? And this is one of the reasons why tests are not enough and not sufficient. Now, let's talk about, the, we, we reached this point here, which is our uh, objective, one of the objectives here, is the online measurements of student learning outcomes. Now, talking about the online measurements of student learning outcomes here, it leads us first, to and to explain the constructive alignment. What do we mean by the constructive alignment? This concept has two aspects. Uh, the first day, the first aspect is through relevant learning. I mean, students' activities, they construct in order to understand the meaning. So this is based on the student himself, okay? Then the second aspect is the alignment. Alignment of what? Now the alignment between the curriculum, teaching methods, and the assessment types. We have, we need to make sure that all these points here, all these parts are all aligned and directed towards the intended learning outcomes. Curriculum, teaching, 
and assessment. So three aspects, they should complete each other. And this relation between these three parts here, we can see it here for the these steps. So the alignments, it goes first. First step of alignments is define learning outcomes. Okay, they should be clearly identified. Design assessment to check students' actual learning outcomes against the intended learning outcomes. So after you decide which, uh, after you write the uh, let's say effective learning outcomes. The second point is your design assessment. So, which assessments do you think can go with the learning outcome? Here, it's uh, the second part, and it's very important. Now, the second or the next part, it's built on the second one, the third part, the choice of teaching and learning activities that enables students to achieve the intended learning outcome. Now, the teaching activities that the teacher will adapt, uh, they should be in line with the, the assessment criteria. I'm not saying here that we are teaching for assessment, we teach for assessment. No, not at all. This is one of the biggest mistakes. Now, we are not teaching for assessment, but when we teach, we have to bear in mind the assessment criteria so that we can help students to reach and to achieve the learning outcomes. Then the last point is the term results and final grades. Of course, this is the last result. Once you're done with the assessments and the learning activities, then we analyze the final grades. Now, how do we analyze them? Of course, not by uh, just analyzing the overall pass fail rate and grade distribution. I will show you how the new method. Now, here is the graph that shows the alignments, constructive alignments. We have the intended learning outcomes first. Second, the assessment regime or the assessment criteria. It should be clearly set in order to serve the intended learning outcomes. Then we have the third aspect, which is the uh, tailoring of teaching and learning activities, taking into account assessments and the intended learning outcomes. Now, the fine learning outcomes. I, I give you an example here. This is a sample of learning outcomes in of the, one of the courses that I'm currently teaching. It's a technical writing course. And as you can see here, we have two, four, six, seven learning outcomes. And each learning outcome starts, begins with an action verb. An uh, action verb, it's a measurable action verb. It should be, as I said at the beginning, the learning outcomes they should be clearly written. And this should contain a measurable action verb that uh, allows us to measure, to measure the achievements. So we have recognize, utilize, prepare, write, compose, produce, and complete. And as you can see, all these verbs, they belong to the three categories of the uh, uh, cognitive domain of knowledge, uh, analysis, and uh, synthesizing, okay? So types of assessment, let's talk now about types of assessment because this is the second step. So the first step is to find uh, efficient learning outcomes. Then the second step is uh, set your assessment criteria. Now, when you set your assessment, you have to bear in mind this. Uh, assessments are not one way, okay? They are multifunction nature. Oh, Multifunction, that means we can use an assessment to, uh, to measure learning. This is what we call assessment of learning, okay? This is an exam that you give at the end of the learning process to show or to understand whether the students, they understood what you are teaching them or not. So this is assessment of learning, like maybe like midterms, like final exams, summative exams in general. Then you have the second type of assessment, which is assessment as learning. And this happens between students like peer review. Hmm? Uh, you give, for example, students uh, uh, a test, an essay, and they can work together. They can assess each other. So this type of assessment, it happens like uh, an, a learning process. Then you have the third type of assessment, which is called the assessment for learning. Assessment for learning, it is 
what we call feedback. Feedback is when you uh, give a student an assignment, then you give him the, uh, your feedback as a teacher. So this feedback, in fact, is very important because the students will learn from this feedback in order to improve himself in the next assessment. So this is assessment for learning, and it's very, very important because uh, there is too much of learning can happen uh, with assessments for learning. Now here, I uh, assessments, let me just add some points here, some explanation, because assessments for learning is very important. It's formative and diagnostic. Uh, then I, I prefer to add this, uh, uh, the thing here from Robert Stake, uh, who said, uh, who said, you know, a very, very uh, interesting sentence here, statement. He said, when the cook says, well, he summarizes uh, the, uh, the, the importance of the system for learning. When the cook says the soup, that's formative. And when the guest says the soup, that's summative. So when you give your feedback to your students, this is formative, okay? So you show him your, his mistakes, you show him how, what he did, uh, where he did good, where he did bad, and from this feedback, he can progress. When the guest says the soup, that's summative. Well, here it's the final exam, the midterm, the summative exam, the capstone project. This is where the, the, uh, you assess the overall, I mean, the, uh, the final, uh, the final uh, let's say, results. So here, you give an exam, like a final exam, it's, it's, it's a comprehensive exam, okay? So you, you assess the overall achievement on these students. So it's focuses assessment for learning. It's focuses on helping students to learn through completing their assignments and gaining feedback. Now mapping of assessment to learn outcomes. This is where, this is one of the steps of the new approach. Of course, when you when you assess, when you write your assessments, you have to bear in mind that uh, your questions or the exams, they are not uh, put like this, okay? So you have uh, to create a kind of mapping. Uh, for example, in this course, we have two plus six assessments, and each assessment should uh, assess or should be linked, aligned to a specific learning outcome, like uh, the table that you can see here, for example, quiz one, it is uh, it assesses uh, learning outcome one and two, because this course we have seven. So the midterm it assesses learning outcome one and two and four, and so on and so forth. However, as you can see here, there is a red area, red zone, and this shows this this learning outcome hasn't been has been assessed, and this is one of the benefits of the mapping of assessment to learning outcomes. So if you do this as this mapping at the beginning of the course, that means everything will be assessed. All learning outcomes will be assessed. But I did this learning outcome because, by the way, I'm a learning outcome assessment specialist. So I investigated one of uh, this course at the end of the semester. Then I found out that one of the certain learning outcomes has been uh, assessed, has been assessed. And this is one of the uh, let's say the benefits of this method in the uh, assessment of learning outcomes. Now, I show you here the one you can see here is spreadsheet. This spreadsheet, I created it, and uh, uh, you have here, you have here on the right, on the left side, you have the exams and all assessments. Then here in the box, this box, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. These are learning outcomes. And this is the mapping. So the mapping is reflected on the Excel sheet. And so this spreadsheet, of course, there is another sheet where I put all the data, I mean, students' marks. Okay, so this is the measurement tool. Uh, now, after the analysis, here is the final uh, graph, which is meant specifically for the learning outcomes. As you can see here, we have uh, learning outcome from one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So this is the achievement scale and the achievement rate. As you can see, learning outcome number one has been achieved with 81%, uh, second also with the same percentage 
However, the third uh, considering outcome uh, rates of achievement is already lower and so on. So this is the benchmark of uh, 70. It's a C grade. And here, as you can see, the seventh learning outcome has been assessed. Okay. Then, uh, what is the mixed approach? The mixed approach, well, we already discussed one part of the mixed approach is uh, the measurements. We have to have a measurement tool which can uh, allow us to, uh, to measure the learning outcomes themselves, but not the overall achievements of students at the end of uh, a given course. So the mixed approach it takes into consideration. Now we have the first part, the measurement tool of the, the, the learning outcomes. Now the second part is the student themselves. Students are our customers. So we have uh, to make them involved in the assessment process. How? Uh, in, in, in my next approach, I created a survey. And this survey is for students to evaluate their achievements of the learning outcomes. So the survey has a number of questions. As you can see here, this is silo number one. Because we have seven silos, we will have seven uh, questions. The first one, I can recognize and make use of elements of appropriate grammar and punctuation. So this is the first uh, the first question or the first learning outcome. So it's the students who will evaluate. I can, as you can see, all of them starts with I, I can, because as I said from the beginning, uh, we are talking about the outcome-based approach. So the, uh, and we have the scale here strongly agree, agree, never all disagree, and then strongly disagree. So at the end, at the end of the survey, we take the, we analyze the results and we compare them with the, the, uh, the, the results of the first measurement tool. And we will see whether what the students say in the survey is in line with the, the results, the actual results of the assessment. As you can see here, this is the silo achievement, and uh, the students, uh, uh, the students uh, survey. Of course, the survey results. Uh, they we, we will we will compare them uh, with the uh, the results of the learning outcomes uh, themselves. Okay, and uh, they should be the survey will help you. By the way, the survey the survey results will help you a lot because. If you compare, the, as he said, if you compare what students say at the end of the survey with the actual marks, with the actual results in the assessments of learning outcomes, uh, if there is, for example, if they say, I, we did not, uh, let's say, uh, we did not, or we did not reach these points of understanding concerning this particular learning outcome, here you have to go back to the student's results in the assessment tool, in the spreadsheet, and see what. Uh, if 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 what student said is really in line what with the the results of the learning outcome, and you can compare between the two uh, the two results. But usually in my analysis, I found that the students they reflect. I mean the students the survey results reflects with the the uh, the, the the spreadsheets or the measurements of learning outcomes uh, results. Now the challenges of this approach. There are a few here. But the first thing is uh, that's the new approach. It should include teachers also. So teachers should be involved in this assessment process. Uh, the qualified, uh, the, we should have qualified assessors or examiners. Because when uh, you, you, you adapt this method, I mean, you should, we should train. We should train teachers and assessors on how to use it. Of course, it will not take a long time. That training is very important because, uh, given the importance of the method itself, I mean, there is there is a need. There is a need to uh, prepare and to train some teachers uh, for this uh, task. Item analysis applied from from or from more accurate measurements. Now, one of the challenges in this method is the item analysis. Uh, ISM, what I mean by ISM analysis, this is when you create an exam and if you want really to go deeply in the analysis of students or in analysis of learning outcomes, you have to go uh, take the analysis question wise. 
That means each question in an exam should be analyzed. Of course, this will take some time, but if you, if we, if we can, let's say, uh, advance or discover uh, something that can help us go deeply, that would be uh, the ultimate objective, the ultimate targets in the analysis of learning outcomes, and we are currently working on this. Students' awareness, students should be, uh, should be aware of the, the, the whole process from the beginning. And uh, why? Because when, you, when we inform students from the beginning that their opinion uh, counts in the analysis of, or the emissions of, of learning outcomes, they will be more responsible and even the results, even the answers that they will uh, put in the survey, uh, they will be answers that are, uh, I mean, um, studied uh, based on their own experience. Then process implementation speed. I mean, the process is a little bit, well, uh, at the beginning, it seems that the process is a little bit slow, but with the practice, of course, when everybody is on the, on, we put everybody on the, in the picture and the whole process becomes uh, very easy and uh, streamlined. Now here we can, I show you here a, a flow chart that I created uh, for the management. And this flow chart is explaining the entire process of the measurements of learning outcomes. So as you can see here, we have, you have to set uh, on the on the right side, you have to start by setting direct measures or indirect measures like surveys. Then we have uh, the uh, direct measure define the performance. Direct measure, I mean the like uh, exams, midterm exams, final exams, quizzes, and so on and so forth. Define performance. The degree of performance should be determined from the beginning. How much you want students, for example, what is the benchmark? What is the benchmark? Is it C grade, uh, so this, the benchmark should be indicated from the beginning. Now, select instruments, the instruments of measurement. Is it uh, uh, an essay? Is it a multiple choice question? So what type of exams are you going to use in order to assess these specific learning outcomes? Then, of course, the other step, next step is uh, data collection. Then analyze the data. Then if the performance is okay, that's it. The outcome is achieved. Then the performance, if the performance is not uh, okay, of course you have to implement correcting action. So the process is very, uh, is very important and very indicative, and it it gives uh, details about how every step is going to to be dealt with. Now, as a conclusion of this presentation. Assessments of learning outcomes is not a one-way approach, as we said. So uh, you can use different approaches to assess your students' uh, achievements of learning outcomes. Uh, learning and assessments are integrated. Everything is linked together, and they cannot be separated. So assessments, it goes with learning, and learning, of course, goes with assessment. Then students also should be involved in the measurements of achievements because students, by the end of the day, they are our customers, and their opinion counts a lot. Uh, then we have tasks should be authentic and involve choice. So diversify the type of assessment, okay? Uh, because if we just follow one assessment type, of course, this will not indicate, uh, it will not give us an indication whether the learning outcomes have been achieved or not, then tasks align with learning outcomes. Every teaching activity and learning activity should be should be always aligned with the uh, the learning outcome. Then uh, one important conclusion is that it should not be used to evaluate teaching. So when students do badly, we intend we tend to blame the student rather than the results to diagnose rather than uh, use the results to diagnose problems with our teaching. So this is uh, should it, this should be taken into account seriously. Because unfortunately, unfortunately, this is what's happened in the majority of cases when a student uh, does not perform as uh, intended. So we we tend we tend to blame the student. So well, that's because of 
you, you did not prepare well, you did not, uh, you are not listening the class and so on and so forth. And we forget to, uh, to blame ourselves as teachers and to diagnose the problems with our teacher. So maybe it's not the student, maybe it's my way of teaching. So in order to be fair with the students, we have to look at the spectrum from the, uh, the two angles. Well, uh, we reach at the end of this presentation. I hope this was uh, benefit for you. And um, thank you very much. I would like again to thank the General Call 2021 team for this uh, wonderful chance to present our thoughts and our experience and to share, to share them with you. Thank you again and uh, see you.